if there are people around you who had potential who squandered it, then they're going to be very invested in you not succeeding, in you not succeeding. When I was growing up, just about everyone, I mean, I was often the youngest. This is sort of a phase. It was sort of a phase that I went through for well, it was more than a phase, quite a long time, because I was the youngest. I, when I went to boarding school, I was, if not the youngest, one of the, one of the youngest in the, um, in the school. My birthday, September 24th, was like right after the beginning of school year. So I was really, really young there. And it just kind of worked out that way, that I was just always the youngest. And so I always felt like kind of small, kind of catch up, you know, particularly in those times where, you know, like like 11 to 13 or 12 to 14, where there's a huge change in, in the male body and so on. So I just, I always felt youngest and, and smallest and so on. And when you get imprisoned in this kind of mindset, it's tough to break out of it because you kind of need the permission of people to break out of a mindset because it's so easy for them to reinforce that mindset in you and put you back into that way of thinking. And so when I decided, like, I have a lot of gifts to share with the world and I want to really do good in the world, I really worked hard to overcome this sense of smallness and, and insignificantness and youngness and because you're younger, you're considered to be naive. Because I was really into philosophy, I was considered to be way too abstract and, and ineffectual and not practical. Like all of this stuff, it was all of these little prisons that, that, that people build in your mind about who you are and what your potential is and what you're capable of. And, you know, you think of Gulliver's travels, right? When he's in the Lilliputians and they chain him down with these tiny chains, but there's lots of them. He could break each individual chain, but he's kind of strapped down with all these chains. You, you have to kind of just stand up and, and snap those chains. And some people will be like, yeah, you know what? You, you, this was like from years ago and, and this is not fair. Like I said this before in the show, like you drop two plates in a family, in dysfunctional families, and suddenly you're the clumsy one who drops everything. And that's just who you are, right? And then there's this confirmation bias. Other people drop things and they say, well, at least I'm not this person who drops things all the time. And if you don't drop things for a while, it's like nobody notices. But then the moment you drop, oh, you're, you drop something again. You're the driver. This kind of cliches, they're not knowledge. They're, they're very restrictive. And they can choke the life out of your life itself. So I would say, who does your underachievement serve? And if not you, who else? And can you talk to them about that and get them to release you in a sense? And if they won't release you, release yourself.